road, as I would say it, in the performance of the end product, and you haven't seen the performance yet, I'm hopefully building you up to the point where I can maybe even shock you with what has been accomplished in our laboratories on silver. But I'm delighted with your question, and I hope that by the time this presentation is completed tonight, that, that we will have at least impressed you that we have a liquid product that's really dynamic and will make a wonderful contribution to the science of medicine and pharmacy also. Our water has been specially processed in a, a methodology that we began to develop over 10 years ago. It's ultra purified, leaving nothing in the water except for pure H2O. The water is processed in a total glass system. And by the time we are ready to add silver to it, this water is extremely hungry. And so it absorbs the silver and holds it in place, creating a highly stable product. We think our ACS 200 product will remain stable for many, many years' time on the shelf. But when you measure the surface tension of the water, we discover that it is 43% wetter, thinner, if you will, able to penetrate cells and tissues much more rapidly than typical other waters out there. And so it has a much higher absorption coefficient of nutrients. Now let me get to your questions. How do we know what we know? Well, we have 10 patents, and uh, we lay our research at your feet, and you can determine tonight if you've seen any other silver product anywhere that will come close to our ACS. Let me begin the main part of the story. The Uppy story demonstrates the accelerated regenerative healing properties of ACS on tissues and cells. May I introduce you to Uppy? As of day one, Uppy was a 40-year-old French poodle. You can see that Uppy has a problem. Veterinarians diagnosed Uppy with serious infectious disease. It was destroying cells and tissues. Necrosis was spreading rapidly throughout Uppy's body. They didn't know what pathogen it was. They had tried several things. They couldn't shut the pathogen down. And on day seven, necrosis had spread through more than half of Uppy's body, consuming it in an extremely rapid, devastating way. Uppy was uh, diagnosed by the doctors with kidney failure. The family was heart sick. They described Uppy as being like one of their kids. And when the doctor suggested putting Uppy down, they said, no, doctors, we want you to use every method in the book that you can to save Uppy's life. You ready for the next picture? This was Uppy on day 22, as three surgeons took Uppy in and tried to cut away this rapid moving wave of infection that was uh, trying to kill Uppy. Well, Uppy was comatose at this moment. Uppy was dying. In fact, in full kidney shutdown, the doctors gave Uppy just a handful of hours to live. We came on the scene with ACS, an experimental product at this time, we said, let's try a last minute effort here. The doctor said, why do you try? We've cut so deeply in Uppy's body right now that, that the dog can't even regrow its tissue in a natural way. The best thing that Uppy will ever do is regrow a primitive tissue covering that will be without fur cells. They said, if you want to pursue the notion of skin graft, fur grafts, and so forth, this will become an extremely expensive proposition for Uppy. But they said, go ahead anyway. And so we began to apply ACS topically and orally. Only those two ways, several times a day. We gave Uppy a drip of ACS down the throat, and we used a, a very modern device called a turkey baster. It worked. This is the picture of Uppy at day 55. A22. Yeah. Okay. I might add, kidneys became fully functional within hours of the first ACS dosage going into Uppy's body. Came totally back online. Signs of infection totally disappeared. So here we are again at day 55. Now let me refer you back to uh, Becker's notes and comments. You've all dealt with serious wounds and surgeries. You know that in the normal sense, a deep wound will begin to heal from the outer edges, moving slowly inside as it fills the wound with, with new, fresh granulation tissue until the wound is hopefully filled in 
but typically if it's a deep wound, a large wound, with some remaining scarring taking place. If the scarring or the wound was under a hairline, you'll typically find uh, hair cells coming back in, but in a distorted fashion. Becker said, when he applied these silver mechanisms to wound surfaces, the whole wound seemed to heal simultaneously, filling in with healthy granulation tissue, with fur cells intact, and all the other appropriate dermal tissues in their proper orders, and more scarlessly is what he saw. Notice what's happened to Uppy. It's almost like a carpet sweeping over Uppy's body. All we've been putting on Uppy is a spray of ACS, topically, and a drip down Uppy's throat. This was probably done four or five times a day through this particular process. Day 90, all systems go, Uppy almost back to normal, small amounts of healing remain. Look at all this left. Note that this was only about 70 days from drastic surgery to this picture. A rather remarkable thing. We've seen sterilization of the wound. We've seen what can only be likened as an equivalent to a rebirth, such as the presence of an active range of stem cells with Uppy's body being restored with all of its beautiful features, including fur cells that the doctor said would never happen again, as deep as the original wounds were following surgery. And here we have Uppy back to life. The only scar that remained on Uppy was on this little elbow up here. Well, Uppy comes into my office about monthly. And so I get to see this uh, healthy little animal. But this type of accelerated wound healing can be easily repeated and demonstrated with ACS 200. Now, I've never seen that with another silver product in existence. The story goes on. Becker and others have postulated that cancer is an out of control primitive tissue that seems to be trapped in a state between normal tissues and fully dedifferentiated tissues or stem cells. It was further postulated that if stem cells could be planted or artificially triggered in the presence of cancerous tissues, that the cancerous tissues would likely revert to normal tissues. And so Becker and other scientists in the country went back to the salamander. They carcinogenically triggered or induced tumors to grow on the, the bodies of the, the salamanders. And when they had a healthy colony of uh, tumors growing on the salamander, and they knew that if they, they allowed the tumors to grow, the salamander would die shortly thereafter, they went in surgically and on the tumor growth created a, an intentional wound, causing this massive regeneration process to occur on the salamander. The regenerative process reversed the cancer, and the salamanders lived, providing a lot of emphasis to Dr. Becker's theory and that of other scientists at the time. Well, my partner and I decided to try something uh, similar. We've, we've spent our lives uh, focusing on silver and, and trying to prove that Becker was right, trying to prove that perhaps the rest of us professionals in the world ought to pick up the torch laid down by Becker and do a little more exploration in these marvelous scientific areas. <laughs> We went into some animal research with rabbits at the BYU uh, Research Laboratories. We took a number of rabbits and uh, we injected with a pressure pump some cottontail papilloma virus until we'd created a healthy crop of uh, growing tumors on the backs of several, several rabbits. Now these tumors of course would have killed the rabbits in short order had we allowed them to grow but listen carefully. We took a hypodermic needle, one half cc of ACS, even though the rabbit backs were covered now with multiple tumors, we injected one site only. Intralesionally with a half cc just simply injected the silver into one of the tumors. Now let me show you what happened. This was a tumor, reference day one, a large growing tissue mass, and 90 days later, it was less than half the size. It ultimately dried up, fell out. The rabbits were doing fine. They would have normally died. 
This was consistently repeated so that we showed that ACS with the potential that it was producing stem cells from adult cells and per Becker and other scientists postulation that to introduce stem cells into a tumorous mass would re-signal the cancer to perhaps get square with the world and revert back to normal tissue. We saw this happening in this type of a study. So we've seen some miraculous kinds of things with a lot of Becker's work. Some people ask me, one person today asked me, how does ACS destroy microbes? Well, I said I have some pictures tonight, if you want to attend the presentation, on uh, how silver works, at least our silver. This is a salmonella, and you're aware that salmonella is normally a sausage-like uh, creature. Well, after destroying the, the creature, we bit sliced it and put this on a slide to show you what the cell body looked like following destruction with ACS. And the best way I can describe this is to say it looks like it's been hit by a high-powered Gatling gun because it was taken apart everything. Its nuclei, every detail of the cell, including the cell wall, has been obliterated by the activity of the ACS. Research has been done on more than 650 microbe types in vitro, including virus. They've all been destroyed rapidly. Lyme disease studies have been done successfully. MRSA, as Dr. Gordon mentioned earlier, candida, warts. Perhaps uh, Dr. Gordon would allow me to tell just one little anecdotal story. We sometimes hear uh, sad stories from families. They come in realizing we're researching on the frontiers of science and they want to know if we can help them. There was a, a young newborn child in Primary Children's Hospital in Salt Lake City a short while ago. The baby had developed a serious yeast infection on the brain. The doctors had opened the brain up, and as the family described it, uh, it looked like the doctors had been marinating the brain in all types of antibiotics and chemistries in an effort to destroy the yeast infection that was there, growing in large, uncontrolled clumps. After a period of time of the doctors trying their very best to bring this type of a problem to a halt, they gave up. They approached the husband and wife, said, there's nothing more that we can do, we're sorry. They said, call in your minister, do whatever reasonable thing you would like to do, but do it quickly because the child is not going to live. They came to us through a friend, and we hand them, handed them a bottle of ACS and told them how to administer it and uh, the bottle was taken to Primary Children's Hospital, it took us two days to arrest the terrible yeast infection that was there of this child. And uh, we've witnessed miracles. In our years of, of study and research, we've seen marvelous things. To warts, toenail fungus with topical sprays being taken care of, we witnessed the, uh, the healing of uh, diaper rash in children and burns, cuts, and scrapes. We've had numerous cases with HIV victims who hand us their doctor's reports prior showing us hundreds of thousands of units of viral load in the tests and following oral ingestion of, of ACS show us the doctor's reports indicating non-detectable viral loads and we've seen this again and again. Even in cataracts that have been mentioned tonight. We've had people spraying ACS into the eyes. and We've witnessed the dissolving of cataracts. Many, many anecdotal cases that we've been involved with, uh, with macular degeneration that couldn't be stopped. And uh, so we've had a lot of happy experiences of people losing their eyesight, coming into the labs to shake my hand to thank me for saving their eyes. Well, a lot of research is yet to be done. But there's some exciting things here to see. And uh, we would like to move on with the research, and we intend to. But you know, ACS became a stepping stone to the creation of the world's best sterile disinfectant products. Now, if you would have talked to people years ago to ask them how far they think that a silver company could take a silver in terms of creating an FDA, EPA approved disinfectant sterilant system and how well it would compete in the world. This is the most